Oh, live from New York. It's the show that, quote, does sports criticism and is beautiful. Oh, that it's is first true. First. So it's true. me who said that. Today, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers preparing for the Lions. Is he also preparing for life after football? Meanwhile, Lamar Jackson still not practicing. Does this mean the Ravens' playoff chances are over before they started? And finally, oh, if you're looking for some motivation, well, you came into That's the right. right saloon. We pour that <laughs> by the keg here. <laughs> It's time for the bud list. Well, not time. I, I and jumped I'm the, the gun. bartender. Oh, That's right. I like that. That's right. Oh, I'm Kevin pouring Wilds. motivation, baby. <laughs> Nick Wright. And Chris Broussard, who's pouring motivation. <laughs> yeah, just the joke Wilds made. What? He just made the same joke. Yeah, but he's the bartender. He's the <laughs> motivation saloon. But we start with the Cowboys at Commanders Sunday afternoon on Fox. Cowboys not resting. Commanders starting their third quarterback this year. That's going great. Uh, Jason Witten thinks the Cowboys are just dandy. They're playing at a high level right now, scoring a lot of points. Defensively, not giving up much. They can get to the quarterback. They can cover, play good on special teams. I don't see really any weaknesses in that football team, Brew. I've You've missed seen that some incisive flaws. commentary from Witten. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he tried his best. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Because no, I don't agree with Jason. Okay. Whitney. And I see a ton of weaknesses on and off the field. Now, I'm going to start. I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. The number one weakness is their culture. Okay? Their culture is a soap opera. Their culture is uh, too much drama. Yep. To be frank, it's a bit clownish. Okay, hey. and that culture that was no, <laughs> that culture does spread down. It trickles down to the players, and it creates just a little bit too much silliness. And look at the top franchises in the NFL. Sure, Pittsburgh, New England. San Francisco, Baltimore, Green Bay. Green Bay, of course, Aaron Rodgers. But coming from management, coming from ownership, right. do you ever see mess like this anywhere else but Dallas? Oh, maybe the Raiders. Okay, they're not very good either. Even now, Kansas City, Buffalo, some of the teams that are really good. You don't see this. There is a Their culture is not, in my view, conducive to winning huge. And then on the field, they got some issues as well. They're not just – they're more style than substance. Here's the issues on the field. Dak, I like him, but he's got – he leads the league in interceptions and he missed – he's played 11 games. Mm -hmm. All right, the run defense. Get okay. this, guys. Tampa Bay, you know how bad Tampa Bay's run defense is. The first game of the season when they beat Dallas, they ran 452 yards. Oh, how bad Tampa's run offense yes. yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. run offense. Yep. Yeah, they ran 452 yards against Dallas. That's bad. Goal to go. We know okay. the red zone. I mean, it's beyond red zone. Goal to go. They, they can't stop anybody once they get in the 10-yard line. And then the you, penalties can is I the say, You make, I, I suppose, a, great a compelling case. Yeah, really good. I think you are way – Two down on the Cowboys. Now, this is, I'm in a weird spot because I agree, and by agree, I mean I've been saying for a month that Tampa is destined to go on some very annoying playoff run, and that would almost assuredly mean they beat Dallas. However, I think one could make a very compelling argument that of all the NFC contenders, the Cowboys have the least glaring weaknesses. Now, the reason I'm not picking them is I also think they don't have a singular strength like the San Francisco defense well, or well, the defense. I mean, the rush, pass rush, no, the pass defense. No, I, I, but I think the San Rushing Francisco game. defense is better. Yeah. I think the magical pixie dust of Brady is more, is impactful. Oh, we I, I'm, well, I, listen, I've just seen it the for dream, two decades. Of course, yeah. It doesn't matter. The point is this. I think for the Cowboys, you, you talk about the Cowboys – like, yeah, they're lucky to sneak in the playoffs. They've lost four times this year. Hold on, let's talk about those losses, though. First loss, first game of the year. Bad game, poorly played. Their quarterback also broke Long his thumb. Long time ago. Well, second loss. The game. I mean, second, oh, I understand. <laughs> the the game. second loss was with their backup quarterback against the current number one seed. Since Dak has been back, they have lost twice. Both games in overtime. Once to arguably the most talented quarterback ever, and the other to Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Well, I'm just telling you. I mean, I mean it's just what it was. It was to the Prince and Aaron Rodgers. I'm just telling you. So they have, since Dak's Shot been back, Brew, they've lost <laughs> two times, 
both in overtime, both against teams that are currently alive for the postseason. So this dysfunction you're describing, I I I understand they are messy. I agree with that. But they are a high-scoring team Mm -hmm. with a potent defense that has some – Can I stop down on the potent defense? Yeah. Can we show the graphic? Because we keep saying potent defense because there's this idea in our head that mighty Dan Quinn has this defense cooking on all cylinders. Yeah. Daniel, these are not – With all due respect – 300 total – is that passing yards or total yards? That's passing – that's total yards, right? Opponent yards. 300 yards is a good game. That might mess up your odds graphics. No. no. Look, regardless, these are a lot of yards. (laughs) Yeah. The other one, Trayvon Diggs. I know he's supposed to come up with the ball. Trayvon Diggs has gone nine weeks without an interception. He's got three on the year. The last one was before Halloween. Micah Parsons, who I know that we think that he's going to terrorize the quarterback. He's got one sack in his last five games. He's got five QB hits, so maybe those affected the game. But this idea... That Dallas has this mighty defense I didn't say is mighty. more of an idea I, than when you actually grind no, no, no. the all I think two. the strength is actually their offense. Yeah. I think last year they were high scoring offense year that in was the league. Too. This year they're a top. I, I understand and we that. saw what happened in the playoffs. I get it. I am not sitting here guar- guaranteeing the Cowboys go on some long run. But you have been guaranteeing for months they won't. And what I'm saying is, I think, pardon me, this team's upside is incredibly high. That this team that, now haven't I said right, that? But, but the you, ceilings is correct. high as anyone but, in the NFC. So I don't know, but what I guess I don't understand is why you're so convinced they can't reach that for a couple of games. Or a couple of games. Here's here's what I'm convinced of. There is a 50-50 chance when they step out on the field, when they come through the tunnel and get on the field, there's a 50% chance they might bring their F game. That that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. I mean, and I know. Look, we don't have evidence know, of that this year. I know that what? you you don't look at close wins over bad teams as a problem because I because that's what the Chiefs. Do. That's what every time. team so in the you, league that, does. Uh, that's my uh, point. Hold on, the Chiefs are arguably. These, hold on, stop for a you second. You look at these close games Bro, over bad. Everybody teams. has them. Uh, had, Dallas has had a number of them And recently. Dallas has also scored 33-0 in a fourth quarter against a team. Dallas yeah, also Jeff blown, Saturday. Okay, and they've also goals. blown out the Vikings. So here's the thing. You, when you, with, of course I don't look at close wins in the NFL as a bad thing because everybody has them. And if the argument is, oh, the Chiefs do it, this isn't an offense of the Chiefs. One could argue the Chiefs are the best team in football, and even they do it. For, the, for you to say half the time the Cowboys bring their F game, then half how are they 12 and 4, having missed their quarterback for a third of the games? If half the time they bring their F game, why have they not lost in regulation with their starting quarterback since week one? A little le- and the half is a, a, a bit high. Obviously, they're 12 and 4. But you, you see, when I do this, do what? When I say tam- when I point out all of Tampa's weaknesses, they don't have and then say they're dust. going to win uh-huh. against Dallas yeah. in round yeah. one. I'm contradictory. I'm Mr. Inconsistency. But when Nick, oh, who's picking the Cowboys to lose much. in the first round, yes, however, gets up here and praises them, oh, because he's still – he's going to say to you, who they all, call me, you're going to say, Mr. Consistent. Uh, first of all, not, it's not I am only picking the Cowboys <laughs> to lose in the first round definitively if they're playing Tampa because Tampa's going to go on a very annoying playoff run. However, and it's rare this happens, Wilds, if my pick is wrong – what I am adamant about is the winner of Cowboys Bucks is going to play in the conference championship game. If they can get past the magic of Tom Brady, they're going to beat who they play in round two, which will be almost assuredly Philadelphia. That I'm very confident in, and we'll see, listen. We'll see how I it guess plays you know out. Jalen won't be, but I, but I, I think the Cowboys are being underrated on this okay. show. Head to Philly, where the Eagles are 14-point favorites over a Giants team that should be resting plenty of guys. Not quite sure. Who's going to be the QB? But this is video from today of Jalen Hurts. Hold on. I am a doctor. Let me check out how this is going. (laughs) Footwork seems good. That looks good to me. Uh, Nick, any reason for Jalen to play against the Giants? uh, Of course, all the reasons. First of all, do we all agree that the Eagles, maybe you guys aren't as down on the Eagles as I am, but do we all agree that the Eagles lose and they all of a sudden go from the one seed all year to the five seed and they're on the road the entirety of the playoffs? They're not making the Super Bowl. Eh, I don't know about that. Okay. Uh, it was, I guess we don't likely, all agree. Yeah. But I wouldn't say. I wouldn't you you wouldn't give them stone. 0%, right. but do we, let me rephrase it's not great. It Do we all agree this is a critical game that they win? Sure. Okay. They're 14 point favorite. For many reasons. Right. 
They're, I, I understand that, and they should win. But we also saw them lose to a team far worse than the Giants last week in the Saints by 10. We saw that. They scored 10 points, and they lost in large part because Gardner Minshew threw a pick six, and the offense couldn't get off the ground. So there's one reason that Jalen should play. But even if we remove that from the equation, if you were to come to me and say, here's the deal, I'm guaranteeing you the Niners and the Cowboys are losing this weekend. So you guys can lose and still be the one seed. Don't worry about it. I'd still play Jalen because he is, if, if they do get the one seed and he does not play this week, he will go more than a month without playing. And the most recent time he did play was his worst game of the year. How can I, anyone not think that is a recipe for disaster? Your quarterback who looked like a potential league MVP yep. plays one terrible game, then doesn't play for a month, and then he's back in the playoffs where his only memories are playing terribly. Like, of course it's a bad idea for him not to play until the postseason. Of course it is. What do you think? I think he should. I think he should rest. I think he what? should be healthy. He shouldn't play. No, he should. First, here's what I think: the 49ers are winning with Brock Purdy. The Cowboys are in the position they are in because Cooper Rush won them a bunch of games. So Nick Sirianni, if you want to be in Coach of the Year conversations, win a game with Gardner Minshew against the Giants' JV team. Is that too much to ask? And give Jalen some time. I don't buy the fact that, like, rest versus rust. I, I just don't buy that he needs to, like, get in the flow. I think they should be able to win this game. If he's 100%, yes, he should go. If he's 80%, if he's 80%, he should go. If he's 78%, <laughs> he should rest until so he can get up to 80%. I, of course, if he's not healthy, don't play him. But I, I'm with Nick completely. First of all, lock up the one seed. Okay, lock you up the one seed. Should be able to do that with Gardner I, 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 But here's the other thing, and I'm gonna throw this out. This you'll say the same thing to this. They're on a two-game losing streak. You don't want to go into the playoffs. Of course, three, you don't. Even if they were to get the number one seed, Agreed. you don't want to go in on a three-game losing streak. And Nick is right. Hertz has got to get out there and play. His last playoff performance was bad. Now, I know he's mentally cares. strong and he probably can overcome it, it's but still, the last time he stepped out there on the play, playoffs, he was bad. The last game he played in the regular season this year didn't play that well. I think he needs to go out there and play well. They need to see it. And look, Rust is real, Wilds. Mon you guys know I was off all last week. I come back Monday. You were cooking. It was a little awkward no, inside. It was a little awkward. No, I agree with you. A Bruce. tad bit <laughs> yeah, rusty. I was like, where's he been? Right. Yeah. And then I, 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 mean, I get what, my legs under best? me after Monday, yeah. and I've been awesome the rest of the week. So, <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm telling you, it, it is real. You, you.